Europe has historically been known for phenomenal mid laners. Alex Siege, Expeke, and the only one that's left standing, Frog. Froggen gonna get played in. He's gonna try to get away. Look at that damage, though. They will pick him off, but that's gonna take a while, and they spent Whoa! so much weight a minute. He manages to get power of evil. I think he's still as good as before. He's pretty hard to face in lane. Froggen, how does he keep doing that? You can't even blink and you'll miss it. This season is the first time that the old guard have been shown up by the new young players in the scene. Oh my goodness. And Fox with a godlike kill just like that. He comes up out of nowhere with this LeBlanc pick. He goes ridiculous on it. Me and Fabian, I think we're gonna be like top top contenders for like the mid, mid lane in EU. We see the right of the arcade. Shots coming out. Flash bomber oh, no, the no. third one gets a double kill. For Piven, you are here. So Soren has become a carry for the Wolves and we can see how they as a team rely on him. Soren continues to fight, he's found Steelback, he's looking for Hootie, he's found him, now he's on to Feverman, the Twin Fangs, it's a Triple Fang! That is Soren going huge! It's really good even though I was not known or like I had no fans before. But here comes Betsy now, Betsy gets one on the board. Heaven's Betsy, 10-0-13. His team had 33 kills, he was involved in 23, no deaths. This guy's not affected by nerfs, man. 9-0-5, he went perfect. Well, uh, I think we can, we can be the new generation. Power of Evil, picking up Freddy, 1-2-2, two, two. a double kill for power. I think we have some fantastic names in here of these new guys who can go up there and challenge the best. The question is just, can they keep that level? Welcome back to the European LCS where the Unicorns of Love are gearing up to face Fnatic. And they'll need to bring their A game if they want to lock in one of the very few remaining spots in the Spring Playoffs. Let's kick things off looking at the Unicorns of Love roster who are on the blue side today with Chachi in the top lane, Kickers in the jungle, Power of Evil playing mid, Vardag's the AD carry, Hillisung the support, and Sheepy the coach. Just quickly as a note, if Unicorns win and Elements lose later today, Unicorns will lock in a playoff spot and be the fourth team to do so. Yeah, they looked great yesterday against the Copenhagen. It was a very important win for them, again, to keep in the top six. Honestly, it was a one-way ticket there. They dominated from the from the get-go. They had a fantastic conversation. We saw the Hecarim toppling for Vici Chachi. And funny enough, the champion Huni also plays. So now there's going to be something going on here. And of course, Power of Evil had a good game. He's so important for this team here. He needs to do well in the early game because then they play around him. He got two early kills on Syndra against Sauron on Karthus and that's what he used to really dominate the game. Yeah, one of the things that's really interesting when you look at Unicorns of Love as a team is their contrast between playing teams that are better than them in the standings, teams that are worse than them. Unicorns of Love have a 25% win rate against teams who are lower on the standings, meaning they get shown up choke, underperform, underprepare, and lose one in four games. But interestingly, they win three in four games against teams with better records. In this case, Fnatic yeah, with a better record. So if statistics are to be believed, Unicorns have got a good shot here against Fnatic. It just seems like they need that kind of hype going into yeah. a game. And when, and when you play one of the top teams, obviously you don't always expect too much going into the game. And if you get a good start, everyone just gets on a whole new level and you start believing and you start making the big plays. And that seems to be the case here for, for the Unicorns. Well, let's take a look at their opponents who have already locked in their post-season ticket. It is Fnatic with Huni 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 in the top lane, Rain over in the jungle, Febivin in the mid lane, Steel back in Yellow Star, AD carry and support, and of course, Daylor the coach. Yesterday, oh, I love it. You just gotta let it ride for a minute. But yesterday, the team comp and the play style seemed 100% on top of the patch. Yep. Fnatic did not go to IEM. It felt like they'd looked at a 5.5 uh, rulebook playbook. They put together the Hecarim, the Zac, the Lissandra, engaged from Annie, and they just, went crazy. It was such a good setup and it really fits them so well. We heard Raynova talk about it before or after the game, sorry, in the interview, how he loves to play tank junglers and this is the perfect meta for him. He can be hard engaged, he can be in the front line and he can play big tanks like Zach. And we also saw like the early game setup from them where they knew that the winning matchup in the bottom lane. 
So he went down, he secured the vision in the river, he got a few early wards down, allowed Steelback to play super aggressively and win his lane, which is something we normally don't see from him. Yeah. So it was just a fantastic early game setup. We've seen it before against SK Gaming, that's how they shot them down the first time around. So they're a smart team now, and this patch should just fit them so well. As long as Huni has enough champions in the top lane with the Hecarim, that's a perfect well, addition. There you go. Then he's going to be fine. And something just to highlight, 89.5% kill participation. For Huni on Hecarim, it was his teleports around the map that got Fnatic rolling, and then it was the slingshots from Rainover that kept them rolling. But just really, really great solid performance. Let's keep in mind the Fnatic did lose to Unicorns of oh, Love yeah. back in week two. That is a very long time ago. And that was a matchup where uh, Febivin was playing LeBlanc, and all he basically did is kill Hillisung <laughs> over, and, and over and over and over. Yeah. But yes, Unicorns of Love, they're currently in the head-to-head. -head. They've got the advantage. And statistically, Unicorns do well against teams above them. And that game was the first time we got to see Huni play on, on a tank. He played Nar and he had a terrible game, honestly. Same can be said for Yellowstone and he couldn't find the right engages. Yeah. And it seemed like it was just one of those games where nothing really works for you and just a lot of mechanical misplays. For Fnatic, they played the same style as always, where we, we see you know, they're fairly chill in the laning phase, so that's not where they normally win. But then once you hit this 15 to 20 minute mark, they can start making teleport plays, they can start catching you off with better vision. That's where they really shine. They tried to do the same, but then the late game team fights, we saw these misplays and the Unicorns they won. Well, we're expecting a very aggressive game. Both Fnatic and Unicorns of Love's natural styles is go, go, go. And hard engage. I want to no see... kite and no engage. <laughs> I want to <laughs> see what happens in the jungle. Because, of course, yesterday Rainover played Zac. It is actually... Uh, it's actually a champion that Fnatic from 2013 played a lot when they were in the playoffs against Gambit, if you go all those years back. Good old but I Souls also like, too. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and I also like the fact that Kickers adapted. He played the Nunu yesterday. Uh, both junglers showing a transition to newer champions. So we need to see what do these guys prioritize? Yeah. Who's going to get their hands on what? Again, if you look at the comms uh, from the two teams, there was a lot of similar picks. Hecker in for the both top laners, played the same style, early home guards into Phage, and you make plays in the mid game. We had, obviously, Annie come in from both supports, yeah. same deal. When you have Annie and Hecarim together, you can force so many fights. And Graves as the AD carry yep. for both of them. So a lot of champions here on 5.5, .5, at least just, judging from the first game, is going to be the same. Let's just see who puts the priority where. Who's going to first pick, let's say, and Hecarim? Top lane here, or is it going to be banned away? So, Deficio, three out of five champions that both of these teams ran yesterday were shared. We need to see who has explored other options on 5.5. Unicorns taking away Zed, taking away Rumble. Sivir off the board okay. from Vardax. So with Rumble being banned now, we should expect expect here Fnatic to go for an early Hecarim if they can. I think they really would value that so highly. We also know Lissandra is a fantastic flex pick for them because February can play it in the mid lane and despite her being nerfed a little bit, well, talk about Hecarim now it's been banned. But let's go to, Fe to the Lissandra instead then for Fnatic. Yeah, so despite her being nerfed a little bit again, it doesn't really matter too much that her wave clear got hit and her early damage. It's about her team fight control, her pick potential, their hard CC, the point and click CC. That's where she really shines. So Fnatic can still go for her in the first rotation and use her as, as the flex pick. Let's see what they decide to do. Final ban, Maokai off the table and a wow. near insta-lock Annie from the Unicorns of Love taking away one of Yellow Star's most successful champions, the split and giving Hillisang the same pick he ran yesterday. And the reason people like to take this away from Yellowstar is, first of all, he's one of the main engagers on, on, on Fnatic, but also he's so good at roaming early, and people trying to push him on the likes of Ajana and play more defensive, where he can really impact the map the same way. That's why people like to take Annie away. He has played Leona in the past. That's a counter pick, obviously, to Annie he can go for, but normally, at least the last few weeks, he would go for Thresh instead, because that opens up for more options. You can roam around on a Thresh here, you can skirmish really well, and you can deep ward very easily, because again, you have the Lancer to save your jungler when you're walking in two and two. Well, we'll find out what Yellowstar decides to prioritize later in the game with Zed off the table. Febivant may get his hands on LeBlanc. In fact, the oh, same the open. mid laner that he ran last time. And Sejuani actually saw a lot of bans yesterday. Yeah, she is. In my opinion, the best tank jungler at the moment. We got like Rexan Italy as the top two picks in terms of you know early pressure, and then you got Sejuani as the best tank because she can even almost match these guys in the early game. She's just fantastic all around. Seems like no jungle picks though. Graves instead, another one of those contested picks between the two teams. And really, Fnatic here already running fantastic strong lanes in Graves and LeBlanc, and we often see this LeBlanc early when Zed is being banned away. 
Kassadin is back. Got buffed a little bit, but he still lost quite a lot of early power, so he's not as strong in this matchup into LeBlanc. I'm so glad you brought that up because we didn't see him picked or banned yesterday at all. It's not really a power for you champion was, either. It was surprising across the entire day. One thing I just want to highlight for Febivin on LeBlanc, two games played, one win, one loss. Zero deaths to Fischio. He's gone 14-0-9 across the two games. So let's see if Fnatic's teamwork can work better. Kikis will be locking the same jungler as yesterday. And with Graves off the table, Vardax defaults to Caitlyn. For the Unicorns now, you can even you can still go like Lulu Janna and run a full-on protect your AD carry in the late game. They ran this yesterday just with a Graves instead of a Caitlyn. Also still having the Anuna for Kikis, one of the best Another one of the great tank picks now. We've just seen how you can shut down an aggressive early jungler through great early vision with your sidestone and just being as annoying as possible on this Nunu. So fairly standard for the Unicorns in this sense, except for Caitlyn. While they have played a few times, it is a champion where you need to hit that pause button in the mid game. You can't just keep fighting and keep fighting, which is what they like to do. And one of the reasons is Caitlyn hasn't worked too well for them in the past, because then they don't tend to be the team who dominate early and then, you know, go really late and let Vardak be the big carry. No, they aim to always finish the games as fast as possible. And that's tough of Caitlyn. It's going to be more fast-pushing composition for them. All right, Pulse, wherever you are in the world, Challenger Caster Pulse is a Nautilus top Correction. Made. This can still be a Nautilus support. Now, this is what I was going to say. Is it top lane or is it support? We saw it in support. I'm trying to remember where. It was recent. Well, Elimination has been spamming it, at least, in yes. Dolic Q. So, and I mean, it is a good support pick. I've seen it in Solar Queue a few times. Deficio where I'd always lose horribly because people don't know how to play it. But. Nautilus to me, he's got more CC in his kit than anybody else. Right. So, what you do now is you max your E on him because it was changed. So now it goes down to five second cooldown at rank five. Oh my which word. Obviously what is is a lot happening? Of this is crazy. I mean, <laughs> this patch, man. Now we're running an old school Yorick Cassiopeia composition where you have this suicide mid laner who just goes bazookas on the enemy team and then you resurrect her once she dies. I mean, this is a Yorick top lane now from Visichachi. Potentially it's not a support, but can also be top lane. Can also be top lane. Somewhere, from some, somewhere in the world, D Man is crying out in pain as Yorick is locked in for the Unicorns of Love. And for Fnatic, they need to opt. This is either a support pick They can still go Lissandra here pick. and have an insane amount of engage. Or they can go Janna if they want more protection. A lot of engage is so good against Yorick, against Cassiopeia here. Their target you can get to fairly easily and shut them down. But again, that would require them to play this Nautilus as a support. There's the Lissandra. I think it's going to be a lock-in. And Fnatic is running an absolutely insane CC comp. Yes, okay, Power Fever is going to be alive twice. <laughs> but he's going to get locked down twice as well. Very easily by Fnatic here. Deficio. This game is insane. Unicorns of Love are doing something that we've seen before. We've seen Yorick, we've seen Cassio, we've seen Nunu, we've seen Caitlyn. Fnatic, on the other hand, support Nautilus is very new. It is very new. It is, it's after the change where, again, you get five seconds cooldown on your E here. So you have an insane amount of AoE slow. Obviously, you have an ulti that you can't QSS, so it's going to guarantee to hit its target. So what you do from Yellowstar's side is basically you walk up and you say, okay, Wes, let's, let's take Vardax. Ulti on him, you know the Lissandro TP is going to come in, you know the follow-up is going to come from the bank from a Juana, and you just blow up that guy. There's nothing he can do to avoid that knock-up. And if Leona does well against Annie, surely, 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 Nautilus can do well against Annie too. Yeah, I mean... It's not the sickest laning phase. It's not <laughs> terrible in the lane, but I it's fine with the Graves here. That's going to be okay for Fnatic. And this Unicorns comp, it's something they ran before they got into the LCS. So it's like a very old school comp for them with the Yorick top lane and Power of Evil who can just go crazy in the mid lane and you just resurrect him. So it's a fantastic late game setup. Problem about Yorick and why we don't see him very often is he's so easy to gank in the lane. I mean, he's immobile. He's just running around with his shovel doing nothing. <laughs> So, I expect Fnatic to just go and kill him. Well, let's find out if Fnatic can do it. Hashtag UOL win. Hashtag FNC win. Let us know who you think will pick up the win. Yorick has always done well when paired with a late game hyper carry. And we saw a very, very scary Cassia appear in the European Challenger Series just two nights ago. Let's see if Power of Evil 
can get off to a good start. We know where the local fans are. You guys at home, jump on Twitter and let us know yeah. where you are. And despite some new picks with their Nautilus support, this really, once again, is such a good Fnatic composition because you got a strong early game, you got a fantastic mid game through Lissandro Leban Graves. They all spike so hard in the mid game. Once you get one or two items completed, and you have so much hard engage. If Unicorns of Love don't have proper wards down, they will get engaged on again and again and again. And they will just drop dead instantly. They gotta go full late game in this situation here. And they gotta get to that point where they control around objectives a bit uh, like in the last game. Because Fnatic are just running so much engage. What I like about the comps in stark contrast to our first game of the day, the uh, expectations here are going to be significantly higher action. Yes, yes. and we're going to get to see if Visichachi likes Power People or Vardux the most. <laughs> There's going to be two guys who's going to be the targets, <laughs> and he's going to sit there with his ulti ready, and I bet you he's going to give it to Kikis at least once and be like, damn, that was wrong. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cast my mind back. Back, back, back in the day when Zen and the Stoic was still covering some games, and one of the terms that he ran for Yorick, Omen of War was angry, Omen of Pestilence was stinky, and Omen of Famine was hungry. Q-W-E in Yorick. And it was always one of my favorite things to hear, because I thought it suited the ghouls' opinions and, you know, moods really effectively. Yeah, Hillisang trying to set up a small freeze to see if he did it. Yeah, it's going to slowly push down towards Unicorns of Love now, how he grouped up all the minions, made the focus the first one coming from Fnatic's wave. So they saw the lane swap. Silbeck is not going to get the same freeze down here. But again, you can set up a fairly easy dive on a Yorick if he's only level 1 or potentially level 2, sitting under his tower, being all miserable and Yorick-ish. Yorick-ish. Well, this is a very exciting start to the game. Yellow Star is uh, pretending to be a ward. We'll see how this works out in his favor. We did see Chachi and Kick is holding hands. He didn't skill anything yet. He's going to get Q and they get, wait for this push out here. Hillisang is coming to the mid lane. He's going to spot Kick is now. Oh, Febren just jumped forward here. He might be forced to flash. That's a flash down from Hillisang. Power of Evil has got the burning and the ignite and the poison ticking. Reign of his flash forward. Now Hoonies even come in for this one from the sideline. We do see the Riptide applying the slow. Fnatic's looking for first blood. Can they find it? 100 hit points to tick through. Power of Evil, no flash available. Febben, he's flashed, but there's nothing to follow up the signal of Malice. That was a wasted summoner, and nobody goes down. And four guys in the middle, and that means Visit Chachi, he's starting the opening to get down to this bottom lane here and do the one-on-one -on -one laning against Steelback. He got early level two from the Grump. He's now managed to get level three as well. So good start for him. While Huni had to blow his flash, he got zero CS or one CS at this point. Still only level one. Big disadvantage for him now early on. Fnatic didn't manage to capitalize on four members in the mid lane. Let's take stock of summoner spells. One, two, three, four flashes and an ignite blown for Fnatic. Yellow Star's gonna root Chachi in place, but he's gonna be very he careful. He's not Down flash. to 100 HP. Summoner heal used. Yellow Star overestimating Nautilus's tankiness. And just to wrap that up, flash and exhaust from Power of Evil, flash and ignite from Hillisang. Overall, more summoners spent from Fnatic, especially with that summoner heal trade. Yeah, and Fnatic at this point, they're gonna have to put Hunyo up in this top lane together with Rainover and push out the wave because Vardax is sitting on his own, just freezing. You gotta push that into the tower, make the tower kill the minions and reset the whole thing. Otherwise, they're gonna be in a massive disadvantage in that top lane. Obviously, Yorick is gonna be a bit of a tanky one going into late. And even if he does nothing other than run in your face, he still has an ulti that can win you games. We'll Man, Source is sitting at home clapping right now. <laughs> Yorick is being played again. <laughs> so as we need to get back into the LCS with Origin, maybe, maybe he'll keep playing. Yorick. We saw Yorick jungle last year as well. Was it Airwax that ran it? It was. I think it was Airwax. It, we saw it once for a very good reason. Once? Okay, right. It was, it was like one of his solo queue picks. I remember coming in, we kind of hyped it up a little bit. He picked it. No, I think no, no, it was no, no. like 0-5. There would have been no we hyped it up. I hyped it there up. There we go. That's it's a Yorick jungle, man. <laughs> All the way back Season 3 Worlds, I remember OMG running it, Loveling. I believe it was playing, not Loveling, it was uh, Pom Pomelo. Oh, he's just what? It was, lo it was Loveling. It was it, Loveling at the time. They keep swapping around. Oh, they kept swapping around. It was Loveling playing it oh. and destroying Lemon Dogs with it. Double stun from Hellasang to get some damage and to steal back. 
Yellow Star there does have level 3 to his name, but the big story is the CS difference between Vizichachi. 25 to 2. Huni is yeah. really being gutted. It is slowly pushing back towards Huni now, but he's going to have to wait quite a while before he gets any CS. And also Raynova needs to stay around this lane in case Kikish shows up and forces Huni back. He still has no flash. So that's also why we can see Sejuani currently sitting near the top side. I mean, he needs some help pushing this one out if they want to secure him farm now. Delicious. Otherwise, he's going to keep falling further and further behind. Yorick is great in a swap in terms of sitting and farming. If you don't push it in and dive him, he will get all this farm here, just using all, obviously, his ghouls from range. Something we do have to touch on. All those flashes down don't mean a lot because Nunu's not the greatest at ganking. You see the Glacial Path into the root. Vardax takes a lot of damage, but the support from Hellasang means Raynov is now the one that's in trouble. He did get a decent enough trade, and Huni comes out healthy enough. And a very good read from the Unicorns. They were expecting Fnatic to try and push out this top wave, so they just put, simply put uh, Hellasang back up there. Also because Vichichachi can handle himself now. Missed from Yellowstar. Look at all the damage he's taking. So, Vichichachi is going to be more than happy. He didn't get punished in the swap because of the four-man dive in the mid lane. A four-man gang. And really good start for the Unicorns. Good damage from Febovin onto Kickers. He's just going to consume a minion and get himself out of it. Picked up that Skirmishes, in fact, as his Tier 2 jungle item. That's a European thing on these Nunos here. It's all about late game. You run to the enemy AD carry, you ice blast him, and you just smite him, and he does no damage to you. That's the whole goal around the Skirmishes from, from Kickers. Now, Dragon has been started by Fnatic because Hillisang showed himself in the top lane. But Power Beaver is here to try and stop it. This is scary. Level 3 on Yellow Star. Fnatic forced back. No ultimates from the Unicorns of Love yet. But Huni, he's picked the fight he shouldn't have. Gonna slow Hillisung down to 100 HP. Hillisung is chasing. Did have Flash, but opted not to jump in. And Unicorns of Love are bullying Fnatic around the map. They've got themselves a thousand gold advantage. And Huni still yet to get CS. Averaging one a minute. And everyone from Fnatic was forced back there except for Febivan after they started the Dragon. Despite knowing that Unicorns had at least three guys around it, very green. You can see how Kick is now saying, okay, I'm gonna... Watch it down here. That somber moment, let it sink in. He will be back in six minutes. And he and will you be kill angry. him again. Wow, dude. <laughs> That's brutal. That's how it works. <laughs> All right. It's not fun being the dragon here. <laughs> no, it's not. Dragon number one goes to the Unicorns of Love. Huni found himself some un uncontested farm. And also Power Weevil here yesterday. Well, let's just see what happens first. Oh, is here again. That, was that was a great beautiful petrifying start. gaze. Catches Fabivin the moment he jumps in. Power of evil. Insane. Famine or feast. He either wins the game for his team or is non-existent, and that's the way to start. Such a sick ulti. I mean, this is obviously the Cassiopeia master power of evil, and he built Luden's Echo, the new item yesterday in Syndra. It is even better on this champion for him. I think he's going to go for it again now. He has the T already. That sh could be his next oh, pick up. Oh, Huni catches engage. two. The shard catches them both. Power of Evil's down. Fnatic, look for Hillisang. He's down. <laughs> the Omen of Death onto Hillisang. We have the ghost of Annie's past throwing out fireballs. Not the greatest <laughs> on the first usage for that one. But I'll give Chachi the benefit of the doubt. Hey, he'd lost Power of Evil earlier. We said there would be action when Fnatic plays. And when they didn't run like four types of engage on their composition, they ganked the mid lane first. Now, <laughs> second gank here, two kills. Still back a swap to that top lane with a massive wave. He's going to get pushed in, but Yorick is back. Now another gank onto Vardax. Vardax is in trouble. Febvin, he dashes forward. He lands the chains. Vardax is going to get well. rooted. But here comes the TP from Huni. Can they get more? Kick oh, is, they oh manages to give Vardax a couple steps longer, but it's not enough. All of a sudden, Steelback is in trouble. Hillisang stuns him up. The collateral damage was thrown down. Summoner heal used. Flash still available. Steelback forced to run away. Chachi low on mana. He's flashed forward for this one. The ghoul not here. tanking it. Hillisung 
does not connect. We do see the hook land. Yellow Star stuns him up, but there's no depth charge to follow it up. Sealback is low on HP, but both of them low on mana. And that dredge line connecting, but not doing enough work for Yellow Star and Fnatic. Man, I love these two supports here. Just roaming everywhere to the mid lane, to the side lanes, trying to set up a few kills. TP was used by Huni before to at least get an assist in the bottom lane, and obviously Fibber ended up dying to Power of Evil. Now he's jumping in again. I still want to see that Ludens echo on a castle you appear. You keep moving, you keep spamming, you get into proc so many times. It's a great early item. And we'll see how early Power of Evil can pick it up. Tower number one will be falling in a moment or two as Fnatic making up, I think, for some small mistakes early. For sure. Got for themselves sure. a kill advantage, a tower advantage. And actually bringing themselves back into it. If you look at the gold on Huni with those three assists and a little bit of CS, he's actually even in gold with his opposite number, Vizichachi. I think that's important considering how shut down he was for the first eight minutes of the game. Yeah, very important with these assists and the early tower. I like how they used still by here on Graves. Really found some, honestly, some success on this champion in the early game, which he didn't have on Corky. Yesterday he looked great on Graves. Now oh. same here when he's swapping him around. Hillisang is back down to this bottom lane. He cannot sit still. Look at the mini-map. Rainover he does have the option to go over that wall. Glacial Prison is available, but decides not to use it. And we do see Cinderhulk has been completed for Rainover, so that clear speed will be oh, rapidly Hillisang. increased. No flash. Oh, man, to dance around. The Fnatic keeps staying around the jungle in here. Look for Kikis now. Should be able to find him. Oh, nice yeah, flash. You think they do? Where is the prison? Not needed yet. The dredge line catches Kikis. That's a petrifying gaze onto Fnatic, but Kikis should still fall. I lied to you. He's managed to get away. No, he didn't. He's we dead. did see Bebovic go down in the mid lane. Power of Evil's got two. Continues to chase through, and it did look like the Ignite dropped Kikis in the back line. Two for two. This is just. This is fun. We got three kills on a support Nautilus. The first <laughs> one we've seen now in Europe. Four yellow star has been roaming around. Obviously the problem is you're not really going to get too many points in your W early, so you're still going to be fairly squishy. But we see the amount of CC he brings. I mean, I think Nautilus is the champion with the most CC in the game. Just like from his passive, the one hit, the Eve to slow, and oh, Tabor's under steal back. He's fine. Well, that hurt. That was a painful tip. It might result in the tower. Here's a replay. Good luck to Fischio. All right, so oh, flashing the first. That was nice. And they're going, so they lock him down, but they don't really again want that Nuno here. It's about getting to Power of Evil, so there's a good ulti from both Kikis and Power of Evil. A lot of damage, and that's why they trade two for two, and of course, Huni is always joining the team whenever they're fighting. He's never going to let them fight alone. The Holo Master, and two for two trade. I have to admit, Power of Evil looks terrifying already. And he's, even not worse even, he's not even built AP, right? Yeah. That's the scary thing. So we need to see how effectively Power of Evil can bring himself into this matchup. The only, the only problem is Unicorns are hemorrhaging towers. It is expected though here, once we move to the mid game again, you have double tier, so you obviously need to stack those first to make you a bit weaker in the mid game. And you're against the Graves, you're against the Lissandra and the LeBlanc. So it is expected for the Unicorns to fall behind now. As long as they keep it to this kind of gold deficit, it's okay. Problem is, Fnatic obviously is going to look for way more. They already got two out of turns. Mid lane dropped down before, and the bottom one is the last one. So just put still back, back down there, push in the wave, and roam in with four guys like they've done before. Because you can keep on testing vision around the jungle of Unicorns when there's a, like a Nuno, because Nuno doesn't offer anything in terms of the fights. So you can very safely walk into the jungle, place a few deep boards, and then you can walk down behind the dragon to the bottom lane. Four guys really quickly and force that tower down. Well, we'll see if Fnatic decides to do that. Quick touch and CS differences as Huni is evened up with Vizichachi. Febivan takes an ace in the hole. As Fnatic look to start the dragon. This is a little bit risky. You can see Huni's not there. Teleport will be available in a moment. It's fine. But Chachi's a mile away and yeah. nobody from Unicorns has responded. But again, Unicorns, they don't want to fight right now. You're stacking tears. I mean, look at the Yorick. You have a Ruby Crystal and a Dawn's Blade. That's your combat stats. I mean, that's nothing. So they need way more time. Oh, Good ball from. Fnatic and Vardax, he's in trouble. They have Dead the ulti. is going to knock him up. The prison's going to lock him down. Rainover's going to flash forward. Hillisung and Vardax are going to get away. And they get the teleport oh, from Vizichachi. Now Huni is in a little bit of trouble. 
Got to be careful as he does make it away. Oh, he stepped on a trap. Okay. Never mind, I got hyped for nothing. Got excited. Well, we're both getting excited in this one. 5-3, Power of Evil gonna punish Fnatic being down in the bottom lane by taking the mid tower. Second one of the game and evening up that goal difference. So we saw Fnatic try and do what we just mentioned, how you can very quickly move to that bottom lane, force a kill and then take the tower. Problem was it backfired because Vardak stayed alive, used all his summoners, and then the mid lane were left open. This is very important for the Unicorns. They keep getting global gold in this mid game while they're still stacking up to the late game. They want to try and get a Whoa. kill on Rain over, not going to happen. But look at Vardak well, here. Snake bites don't kill bears. Good point. 0-1-0, zero, zero. Caitlyn doesn't kill bears either, or people. In this case, you haven't gotten to use your early game power. You are very weak in the mid game. So Vardax is not going to offer a whole lot. This is going to be all about power of evil with the early kills. Febrim will even be able to get some damage. I really don't think tower. Vardax likes Febrim. That's two ace in the holes back to back. It's not going to result in a whole lot of pressure. We do see Huni trying to wave clear as best as he can. Got that Marilla Nomicon completed. And the support to Renan. But look at the damage that Chachi's putting with those ghouls. Constantly throwing out those omens of famine over and over and over. Sustaining and poking Huni out, who's got no armor yet. Basically, he's rolling his head over the keyboard because he's playing Dora <laughs> and he's just spamming everything. What was the technical term? Face roll, I believe. Face rolling. That's a phrase I have not heard in a while. Because you haven't seen Yorick in a while. <laughs> That's also true. I'll have a look. Yellow Star, he's really enjoying uh, cosplaying a ward. Chilling in the enemy jungle. Oh, that's a flash Tibbers! Huni's in trouble and Huni's down! Holo Holo Holo's out! Chachi and Hillesang now looking to set up on the tower. That was a, honestly an easy pickup. Yeah, I think uh, after that tower got down They're in the bottom, right, it's not over, no. Rain oh, over. Glacial Prison missed again. Rain over didn't connect. Kickers has thrown Blood Boil. Flashed forward and Ice Blast Huni in the face. Look for the dredge line. That'll knock Vardax up. Flash, Buckshot, collateral damage available. One more hit. Does land. Steal back. Bounces one in reply. Two for one. Unicorns get the tower. Good luck, Deficio. Again, it, <laughs> there's a lot of things happening here. I'm not really too sure. But it's still worth it for the Unicorns. They got obviously the two kills and they got another tower. More global goal for them. Fnatic though, they're teleporting in now. And oh, Yellow Star is on his way to Nautilus. Here we go There's again. The e, the Round slow. 27. Yellow Star's looking for a target. His dredge line kick is his Chachi. Will be the first focus. Feathervin plus Huni get the kill. Absolute zero channels. And Feathervin goes 2-2-2. Two, two, and two. Fnatic respond. Find Unicorns out of position. Grab themselves two uncontested kills. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did. I, mean, I, I don't even know, man. We're 18 minutes in and everyone is just dying left and right. They keep roaming around. I mean, have we had a laning phase in this game? Or has it just been pure roaming from the start? Dude, it ended at like 1 minute 30 with a four-man dive onto Power of Evil. So, now all out of turns are gone. It's an even battlefield. We've seen two supports roaming. So far, Yellowstar has gotten the better of it. Three kills, four assists. Going right to glory as well on this Nautilus, so we'll get quite a lot of HP, which obviously works well with his W there. And there's the Luden's Echo. Here an Echo. From echo, echo. Why do you like Luden's Echo on Cassiopeia? Well, oh, whoa, 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 hold let's on. Let's talk about on. that after, yeah. Febivin He's plus Huni. This is scary. He's oh, dead. Snake got bitten. Exhaust comes out, and look at the scary thing. Despite the blind check. Pepperbin almost got taken out. So the reason I like it, first of all, you already get a lot of movement speed from your Q. Add the 7% as well from it. Great. More movement speed, dodge around. Perfect. Second, you stack it so fast because every spell is 20 stacks on it. So whenever you sit there and you just spam your Twing Fang, it goes up so fast and you get more procs from it. And even if you put down your W and people step into it, they're going to get that proc and take the damage. So there's so many things working for Power Viewer with that one item. Obviously it makes him extremely squishy. So he's going to have to rely on being together with the team and Visi Chachi here to get to use it as often as possible. Otherwise, he's just going to drop dead every time. Fnatic now, because they got that kill, pushing in. We talk about this strong, strong mid game they do have. So also why they're in the lead, despite the Unicorns getting quite a lot of towers early on. Oh, There's that's a from Yellowstar as well as the oh, death one, charge. One. Did not want that one. Spider Nautilus, Spider Nautilus runs away with the giant hook. 
don't really know why. I'm not sure that's yeah, how this song goes. Yeah, that was, a bit, that was a bit bad. I'm getting a bit excited here. Flash is blown. And we do see Unicorns of Love with a positional. That was a tip is onto Huni. Stuns him up, but after the Glacial Path. Unicorns, they're hammering away on the inner turret. We do see Rain of a Glacial Prison available. Does he want to throw it up? The answer seems to be no. Here comes the rest of Fnatic from behind. Remember, no depth charge available. Oh, he got the three charge for three. Power of Evil tries to put some damage in reply. It's in fact Kickers that goes down first. Yellow Star pulling the attention on the back line while Fibbivin is still back. Evil. Being zoned away by the Ghost of Christmas past. We did see Power of Evil get given the omen of death and the Unicorns of Love come out with a fantastic team fight. Oh. He's Two alive. for four, and that's how Yorick plus Cassio works. Yeah, and Fnatic with the engage. Look at that, the Power Rangers are even in the house. <laughs> I want to see the engage again. Not sure how Fnatic managed to lose it, because they got a pretty good ulti from Raynova. We're supposed to just blow up these targets, and then you disengage away or kill the Ghost a second time. But Unicorn's getting everything they want. You have a fed Power of Evil. Step one for him to win. Oh. You have a dead support. That's not step two, <laughs> by the way, but... By having that fed mid laner with a Yori Goldie, that's enough clearly to win fights for him because Vardex is sitting on Vintage on a Caitlyn. I mean, it's not really him, he's just pushing a tower. All he's gonna do, but Dragon, it's gonna be started, but it might not be secured because the rest of Fnatic is coming. Holy moly. And they only have one thing to do, and that's keep Chuck going. He's gone. He gets caught by the dredge line, rooted by Hooney. Featherven pops him. Dragon goes to Unicorns of Love. Hooney's looking for more. Oh, he doesn't have the him. ability to lock anybody up. Glacial Tomb on cooldown, not even needed to do it, Kickers, throwing out the laugh emote. And Fnatic get two kills, but they lose the dragon. Are Look they the seriously lane, going though. Baron? Well, the thing is, you have top lane pushing down here, so Unicorn's got to go and protect that one. And if they do go to stop this Baron, you don't have the Yori Gold to this time for Power of Evil, and you still have so much engaged on Fnatic side here. They can start the Baron and quickly just stop it and turn around and engage on the Unicorns. And we'll see if they do that. Glacial Prison and Tomb is available. Unicorns of Love are putting some poke down. Yellow Star eats the ace in the hole, throws out the dredge line. They've got Power of Evil! He did get the stun down! The petrifying gaze was out! Fnatic need to be careful. They're low on HP as Baron helps to at least put some damage on the back line, but it's a two for zero. The Unicorns stop the Baron. That is important to note. So Fnatic up with the one. There's some more kills here by just forcing that Baron. And now, okay. Okay, this is just a bad fight. There's been like three or four fights already we haven't even got to see. So Power of Evil, I mean, look at the damage he can do. Is that a four-man, three or four-man petrifying game? There was a lot of people. Oh, my word. Well, he did just start. Okay, so Yorick is tanking it now. He's sitting under Pip here. Vardux trying to kill the guy. No, no, now Rainover's <laughs> here. Rainover's here. He's got Smite available. He's down. Absolutely kill the Nunu. channel. Baron is still alive. Baron, no, it's Unique that goes down. Nunu taken out as Yellowstone Steelback. Look to clean up the house. Visit Chachi. Already threw out that Omen of War onto Kikis. Baron secured by Unicorns. Two for two trade in the fight. And Febivin, Yellow Star, they're not done. 23 and a half minutes into the game. We have got 29 kills on the board. Five towers to three in favor of Unicorns. And unicorns with a Baron buff. Yes, Trevor. Yes. <laughs> and as predicted, we're going to get a Yori Gulti on that Nuna. That was smart. He got to consume the Baron for Kikis. All right. Okay. So let's look at it here. Unicorns at this point are strong enough to team fight. As long as they don't all get blown up instantly from the engage of Fnatic, we've seen the damage Power Weaver can do in two rounds. They also have fantastic ability to fast push a tower with Nuno Caitlyn. If they do manage to group five people on that one tower, where Fnatic on their side, it's all about getting that jump. Look at the damage, I mean, that was wow. the Luden's Echo, an E and a Q for Power of Evil, 50%. Well, Power of Evil's got his hands onto that blue buff, forced Febivin away. The rest of Fnatic reeling as they deal with the pressure that Power of Evil's putting on the map. Yeah, really, the scary thing is, this is so good for the Unicorns because they have survived that mid-game. From Fnatic, they got a Baron from it. They're just slightly behind in goal as well. Fantastic situation when you consider how good the late game comp is going to be. Now let's see what they can do with this. Three members still with Baron. They're pushing down the bottom lane. Fnatic not in a position to fight and no teleport from Huni yet. Tower safely secured. 
Fire Unicorns of Love. Fnatic simply did not want that one. Let's see if they can find an engage. Base Gates on the side lane can actually be used quite effectively with the Sejuani. If Rainover wants to go that route. Also, with Yellow Star, he's got that Righteous Lori picked up. An additional HP and lots of HP stacking. Love the animation of Luden's Echo. Whoop. Trying to get his W to at least give him a bit of a shield. Not skilling it up here, doesn't need the damage from it. Instead, you need less cooldown on your E, which is the first one he maxed. But again, the people want to play Nautilus support, max your E first, roam around the map because you have fantastic ganks early on, and you can also engage a fight. Well, let's see what they do. Huni decides not to follow in with the Glacial Path. Kickass is being chunked out by Rainover, and Rainover is taking damage in return. Inhibitor will fall. Fnatic have not gone all in for this one. Super minion secured in favor of the Unicorns of Love. Fnatic unable to find the opening they were looking for. Huni still does not have that hourglass. That's a whole lot of don't go there pings. Pretty wisely, but man, the Unicorns have been so good at trading objectives here. Every time Fnatic dove them somewhere and took a tower, they managed to respond elsewhere and keep it even early on. And then, of course, all the dragon fights going on and Power of Evil getting these early kills. Really just been fantastic for them. Doesn't even have a fully stacked tier yet on the Yorick. He's been pretty slow, sitting on 700 mana at this point. Inhibitor down. Fnatic is going to have to try and find and engage. Place a pink ward around this wall where you see this ward is being placed by the Unicorns and you have a flank opening if you want to start the burning. They did just place the pink ward as well. So that's where you're going to get your opening from to start the fight there. Vizichachi is going to die. Well, Vizichachi throws down the Omen of Death on himself. And new Not Chachi. the way Unicorns want this team comp to work, but now Power of Evil's in place. He's looking for an engage. Huni does not follow up on the E. Waiting for Vizichachi's Ghost of Time, it just has. Fnatic, numbers advantage, but unwilling to commit further. You never want to walk into a Cassiopeia and Fnatic wisely back away. I want to touch on something really quickly, Deficio. If Fnatic lose this game, it will be tied with H2K for that second place position at 11 wins, 5 losses, which would set up that Fnatic H2K battle next week as a potential second place decider. There is a lot on the line here for the current number two team in Europe. TB from the charge here, here. They don't want to give up this dragon. There's no ulti just yet. Unicorns really want that one ready. It's a very important part of their comp here. Look at the top wave pushing in. If they force Fnatic to stay around this dragon, those minions will do a lot of damage. It might even just abandon and go straight for this top lane, or bottom lane, sorry, instead. If you got the Nuno Cape lane, you can destroy these towers. Well, Unicorns. Also set you up to be flanked, though. Got a few good wards on the side, <laughs> and now you have nowhere to go. <laughs> Okay, let's see who comes out ahead. Yellow stop does not connect with the dredge line. Huni, he's got in. That's a flash W. He's called Power of Evil. Collateral damage is going to be shielded away by the Archangel shield. Steelback is down. Power of Evil soloed him. Featherman being forced away. The exhaust burned through his damage. Despite the fact Power of Evil is down, he is still managing to wreak havoc thanks to that Ghost of Christmas past. Rainover is looking for the support of Hillisang and he finds him. But the Battle Bear is down. Power of Evil finds another one. Two for four. And the Unicorn set their sights in another inhibitor. Turrets. Such a good fight again here. Yeah, all the focus on Fnatic is on Power of Evil, and it doesn't even matter because once he goes down, he's back. That's a perfect score when you have a Yorick. You died six times, but you got seven kills. You've done your job, and they're pushing in for the finish. Oh, it looks like they can. Unicorn's chance erupt. Huni has to pull off a godlike defense. He's oh, got the support of Yellow Star. They've got kickers, but he flashes away. Yellow Star unable to find another target. Unicorns get a Nexus turret, but Fnatic hold on by the skin of their teeth. Baron up in 50 seconds. Last time Fnatic tried to start it, they baited Unicorns in for a few picks. You see it again though, so Engage coming in. Puni got a lot of CC down and the Hourglass, but notice here, Power of Evil. He's still very healthy. Ignore the replay, people died, now more people are gonna die. Kick is... Well, one guy. Hey, you're not wrong. Two, oh, Chachi's two. caught up by Febivan. What can Chachi do? Omen of oh Death, yeah. not available, so unable to ult himself. Right. Is it Baron time again? Unicorns get Dragon, Fnatic get two seconds. kills. I saw this movie last time. It didn't end well for Fnatic. Ah, okay. Was it a good movie, though? Well, if you're a Unicorns fan, they stopped the Baron and got kills. So, I guess it depends which camp you lie in, uh, uh, Deficio. Well, we had all the fans cheering for Huni earlier. 
So I've heard a few people call out for the Unicorn. So Baron is going to be started. Just respawn. Look at the fancy animation. And now we're going to kill him. Uh, let's see. How quickly can Unicorns respond? Do they even want to? The answer appears to be no. No vision in the pit. Nowhere near. And Fnatic, dare I say it, regain control? Until their inhibitor respawns, no, I don't think that's fair. Have anyone really been in control in this game? Oh, okay, that's fair. That, <laughs> like you know what? That, yeah. one. You know what? I take it back. I take it back. I take it back. No, you have a point, though. You have a point. They got the Baron now. Small goalie that doesn't really matter anything at this point because we've already really gotten to that late game point. Vardax has basically just been killing towers all game long. My power of evil has been killing Fnatic as often as he could. And the Yorick pick so far has been working. The old school Unicorns comp, they used to run this again before they got into the LCS. Before anyone really knew who the Unicorns were. Now we all know exactly what they are. Well, Fnatic have a pension for playing bloody games. The record for most kills in a matchup in the spring split was 50. And it was Fnatic versus the Copenhagen Wolves, the Fischio. We're currently getting closer and closer to that. 38 on the board. I think uh, 12 more could be. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we've had a power range in the audience. We've had uh, OG and Cake Fan. And we've had this sign is useless. I love you guys. That's awesome. See? Yay! Oh. There's a few. So, Fnatic, 32 minutes on the clock. Small gold lead, got Baron, and their inhibitors respawn. Deficio, can you make sense of what their next step would be? Well, I like what they've been doing now to set up the bottom lane. Minion wave here. You can see how they're slowly pushing up. But they need to start grouping because the Unicorns are not exactly running any way of pro well oh, never mind that because he's getting jumped Helisang's in trouble he's down but where is power of evil down to 50 percent hp omen of death not been used yet as huni is out in the background power of evil's no power of evil chachi was is out that of game? position steal back and fanatic have found four kick us in full retreat a one for four trade and a baron buff minion fanatic beyond the inhibitor turret they're pushing through Minions are coming here. You can see they're pinging them on the minimap. They got the Baron still trying to push in. It's just a lonely Nunu trying to defend. Is it enough? Can Kiki scare them away? Fnatic, they're uh. waiting. They've got minions. I don't know if it's enough. 15 seconds before Chachi is up. Vardex getting closer. Kikis is trying to pull attention, but it's the not enough. The Nexus Tower is down. Hillisang's in place. He needs to have a magic, magic stun. But he's not going to because he's in trouble. Feathervan continues to focus the turret. Hillisang is down. The Nexus Tower is down. They're onto the Nexus. Fnatic look like they're stunned at 33 minutes. Fnatic are taking down the Unicorns of Love. No! A few more hits. No, 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 no. Oh, what? What? I cannot understand this game. Unicorns of love. It wasn't defend useless. Their nexus. Kikis and Helisang together. Managed to stop for long enough. Okay, so let's see the engage from before. Chachi didn't manage to get down his ult. He gets stunned at first. All the focus now is on Huni. Helisang goes down. Where's the ult from Chachi? Not there yet. He's not CC'd. Power Weaver is still alive. He's the guy we're looking at. Simply just no reaction there. He got pulled in in the end. And that's why they lose the fight. <laughs> but the manly Nuno. And then <laughs> Hillisang <laughs> got in there. And now they what? got him. So now another fight. Oh. Okay, Vardag's down. 5v4. There are supers to deal with in the middle lane. And Fnatic may want to use a numbers advantage. Okay. It's a couple of love taps. That's all Fnatic needs. Don't have XPEC anymore though to backdoor that one, but they're going in again. Oh, that's a petrifying gaze. They've caught two. Power of Evil is dead. Don't see what's down Hill though. Is and Chachi are trying to get away. We do see the Omen of Death. What can Power of Evil do from beyond the grave? He's caught steel back. But that, that is the most number of kills we've seen in the spring split. 14 minutes quicker than before. Yellow Yellow's star, the back door. I've seen this before. It happened at Worlds, and it didn't go in Fnatic's favor. Will their fate be different? Nexus is going they down. Kahuni. Who is TP? Oh, no, 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 no. It's what Fnatic are cheering. We see Rain of his down. Who is it's, it's happened again. Deficio, it's happened again. Fnatic.
Fnatic are not able to defend the Nexus. They've got supers barreling down the mid lane. What can the super minions do? Get that super minion! Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Someone call Peck it. We need Peck in here, man. Otherwise, that Nexus is so never listen, gonna die. Listen, 5.5. We changed turret health. We changed turret shields. Rito, please. Nexuses are too damn tanky. All right, another engage. This time, though, Chachi gets down to ulti before Power of Evil dies. That's the important one, because notice as soon as he goes down, Fnatic starts running away from him. They don't try and kill the ghost. They just keep trying to kite him. Kick his joints in. Still back goes down. No CC to lock Power of Evil or anything. And you can see how the rest of Fnatic are saying, we're done fighting, we're just gonna try and kill that Nexus. This is support Nautilus though, with like zero damage. And obviously the teleport from Huni as well. Unicorn's got the fourth dragon, <laughs> only one for Fnatic. It is still not over, everyone is alive. What summoners do we have? Vardex no flash, Power of Evil no flash. A lot of flashes down for the Unicorns. Same thing said for Fnatic, so basically there's been a lot of fights. I, I have no idea what to think anymore. Fnatic with that Nexus, again, <laughs> just flashbacks, and we were touching on that team fight. 50 kills was the number to beat. It was Fnatic Wolves last time. Fnatic Unicorns of Love blown that out of the water. 14 minutes quicker, six kills more. And it all comes down to Power of Evil. Can he take out Fnatic? He's got two lives to do it if Chachi hits the right buttons. Because we've seen what happens when Chachi doesn't. And Unicorns are on the aggressor. And the guard minions coming, sitting here, just trying to push this one into the Nexus, forcing Fnatic back, and then you can just quickly go down once these minions hit the bottom lane tower. They got that Nunu, Blood Boy in the cave, and that tower is going to die extremely fast. Engage, potentially, no. Oh, yeah, they're going in. Raynov is thrown in the Glacial Nothing Prism, but there's on. no support to follow it up. Dredge line is still up for Yellow Star, as is the Tomb from Huni. Kickus, low on mana, low on hit points, down to a third. Unicorns of Love continuing the siege. They are unrelenting. There is one Nexus turret standing, and the Unicorns say, we will have it. Oh, it's Fnatic caught down. Fevif is in trouble. We see that uh, Kikis is dropped as he was channeling his absolute zero. Dredge line knocks up multiple people, but Chachi forced to use that Omen of Death on himself. They got one. Double kill for Steelback. What can Fevif and his Steelback do? Vardax and Power of Evil alive. They do see the dredge line connects with Hillisack. Look at the carries. They're both rooted in place. Hourglass keeps Huni alive as we Yellow Star taken out. This is a two, three versus three in the base. Everything is down. It is all steel back and Hooney now. Back and Hooney. The Nexus is standing. Steelback has got Hillisung. He's critting massively onto Vardags. But Vardags and Power of Evil, they are pushing with the minions. Hooney on full HP. Deficio, will they go in? Glacial Path. We do see the shard connect, but look at the auto attacks. Power of Evil's got him. Can Power of Evil turn it around? Can he get Vardex? From Steelback. He can't Vardex find can Vardex. Steelback is looking for Power of Evil. Unicorns have done it. Unicorn to beat Fnatic! I have nothing more to say. That was such an awesome game to watch, man. Oh, coming from a fairly slow game one into this, <laughs> such a difference. But when it is two teams who just love to fight left and right, I mean, at minute one, we had the first setup for a mid lane dive or mid lane gang. It happened, nobody died. And there was no laning phase. I mean, that was out of the window. It was just non stop roaming around, Nautilus support showing how good he can be early game at roaming. But then also showing the power of a Yorick, guys. Get playing Yorick in Solik here now. Get home and play Yorick. Obviously, you want to watch this first. Yorick is the new thing. But power yeah, power of evil, of at least evil. in the mid lane. Taking down Febivit, man on screen. Steelback doing everything he could, but it just wasn't enough. I have never shoutcasted a more exciting game. 64 kills in 38 minutes. Blowing the kills per minute. Total kills records out of the water. And this is so important for Unicorns in that tight, tight race to secure a playoff spot.
A win against the top of the table team is worth its weight in gold and so important for Fnatic. Yeah. They are now tied with H2K. We are set up for a potential tiebreaker battle between H2K and Fnatic next week. Fnatic look heartbroken. Twice you were at the Nexus and you almost had it down. I, I don't even know what the HP was. We're talking maybe about 100 HP on that Nexus and you didn't get it. And Nunu stopped you from finishing the game. You know what? You know what? You, you look at Fnatic, right? I don't care what year you were in. I don't care what tournament you were watching. Fnatic plus Nexus equals awesome. Fnatic against SK from Katowice 2013. Fnatic at Worlds last year. Fnatic this year. It doesn't matter the players. They're, they're epic. And of course, Huni... Taking pictures, hugging the fans. Fantastic. 5-7-21 on that Lissandra. Great, great, great play. And such an exciting game from two massive fan favorites. For sure. Honestly, love the game. From the start of the roaming to this. I didn't even have to say anything because they were just fighting nonstop. Yeah, I'd like to make a formal apology to anybody listening to that because I, I... You went a bit crazy with the whole, whole, whole I may have been. screamed a little bit. But yeah, that genuinely is the most exciting game that I've had the pleasure of shoutcasting. But isn't it fantastic? We're watching the, video games and we go all crazy. We jump Natic around. And unicorns. Unicorns now nine and seven, Fnatic eleven and five. Yeah. Um, I want to just read what we said all the way back at the beginning of the game. If Gambit beat Elements at the end of today, Unicorns of Love are now guaranteed a playoff position. The, the only team that beat an LCS squad in the promotion tournament last year in Europe to join in to, to join yes. the LCS, and they are inches away from securing their first playoff. And what do you do when you face Unicorns in a best out of five? Because you got like a list of probably 50 picks and you're like, okay, they could run this comp. We don't want to play against that. There's the second one here. And then how do you pick and ban against them? Like, how do you adapt between games? Because when they suddenly pull out a Yorick, you don't want to sit and ban Yorick now no. just because <laughs> they can do this tactic. So it's really, it really is tough for, for teams facing the Unicorns yeah. and also why it's so random often when they do play. We don't really know what's going to happen, but it is another win against the team above them in the standings. 75% of the time, Unicorns gonna be more teams now. that are better than them. It's going to be more now. That number's going to go up. It'll be for 80% them. now. Like, but then it also asks the question, Unicorns, they're scheduled next week. I've got to double, double check who they're playing. If the teams are below them, they cannot afford to lose those games. That's true. That's true. And they still need to be more consistent if yeah. we go into playoffs. Fnatic has shown quite a lot. This game, this game was just fantastic, <laughs> but that's basically it. I cannot wait to hear Cyanide and Shox try to break this one down. There's about 25 replays of team fights, There's and I want to hear every single one broken down by you, Cyanide. No All slacking here, no slacking. No, definitely not. Um, interesting, interesting matchup. And we've touched on the playoff scenarios, we've touched on that, but the, the, the other question is, what does this do to Fnatic's confidence? You know, they, they, they seem, they're in a comfortable spot. Yeah, but they're going to be fine. You're going to look at this game and say, wow, that was insane. We're going to rewatch where did we make some mistakes. Yeah. Next week, move on. Well, we'll find out. So for a closer look at that bloodbath, good luck well. to Shox and Cyanide breaking that one down. Thank you very much, Quick Shot. Luckily, we have some help after that absolutely stunning, stunning battle in Wind versus Fnatic from Vardax, who uh, rejoins us here and visit Chachi. But first, I think we all got to calm down, me included, and you, because you were getting some harsh flashbacks in that game. Is everything <laughs> okay now? Yeah, that, that was like game repeat of Fnatic versus OMG. Thank God I was not playing this time because I don't think I could take a beating like that yeah. the second time. <laughs> first, you guys both tell me it is nerve-wracking to sit here and watch a game like that, even if you're an objective fan, but how is it to play it and how do you control those nerves? Uh, for me personally, uh, it's like super hard. I was like shaking so much and I was like nearly jumping out of my chair. As soon as we defended the Nexus with like 200 HP, I was like almost jumping. Yeah. Super L excited. Luckily, it's a lot of auto attacks on Caitlyn there. Um, I want to pull up the replay uh, on the screen of when you guys defended the Nexus twice to know what was going on in your heads, because to us it looked like, okay, it's lost two times around. Uh, yeah, we thought it was lost as well for a second, but we are like, let's try to defend. Uh, and we want to focus down the graves pretty hard. We managed to do that. <clears throat> I don't even see anything like here. I'm just going for a Nautilus and the rest <laughs> of my team clean up uh, LeBlanc. Yeah. It was one more auto attack from LeBlanc and we And it was lose, over. This was the first time and if uh, I'm correct, we'll get the second one right after this right now. Uh, yeah, we didn't really expect them to rush the Nexus like that. Um, I thought for a second they can finish again because they tip it with Alessandra and uh, they didn't deal enough damage to the Nexus. Mm -hmm. mm. 
Almost. <laughs> yep. Yeah, almost. I was actually pretty scared at the time where Lissandra actually TP'd in and she started autoing me. So I think maybe if they actually alt in the Nexus, they might have had a better chance of finishing. Yeah, yep. maybe, maybe. It's always those little things, isn't it, Cyanide, when you have to hit that Nexus? Yeah, it's using the locket and uh, <laughs> stuff like that. Let's not gets, bring that up again. It gets very difficult in a, when you're in the spot. <laughs> Um, guys, I do want to ask, how did it get back to this point? Because obviously you had a couple of champions that had to scale, but somehow so many kills on Power of Evil early and you guys meant to push through. And then all of a sudden Fnatic turned the tide. Uh, it's because we just took bad fight. There was a fight where we engaged middle and my ultimate wasn't even used in that fight because we were just in a bad position. I didn't see anything from the smoke screen or something like that. And then I just got 2 low HP. I didn't have any armor yet, so Grace was uh, killing me pretty fast. Mm, so I think it was mostly because my ultimate got stuck. Let's say if I could do Tristan or, or Power of Evil, uh, he could probably do a lot more after reviving with Castillo. Mm, mostly that. <laughs> and after that we took some other bad engages as well. Yeah, that uh, Cassio yorick combo with the new item, that name I can't Blue remember right now. Yeah. It is like one of the most OP stuff I've seen in a while. It was just so sick when you actually executed the combo properly. It was looking impossible to Fnatic. To yeah, exactly. Fight. With Ludens Echo, Cassio can offer, uh, just go for a more aggressive build because usually you can't afford to go Ludens Echo, otherwise you will be just too squishy. But with Yorick, you can just go for it and after Yorick ult, you will still deal so much damage and like be a bit more tanky with that. It almost seems unfair. You have Power of Evil, who's fantastic on uh, Cassiopeia, then you have Ludens Echo, and then you have Yorick. It's like, enemy <laughs> team, come at me. Um, actually, you were saying during the draft and after that you thought that the Caitlyn pick was going to lose the game for the Unicorns of Love. I'd love to hear your opinion and Vardex. Yeah, I, I didn't really understand. Why, why did you go for Caitlyn? Like, in my opinion, Caitlyn is pretty bad pick. Was it just to be a bit more safe on your own and then focus on like keeping the Cassie alive with the Yorick? That's pretty much it actually, because Kaelin with my range, I don't need to go full hyper carry because we want to save the Yorick ulti if possible for the Cassiopeia. So I can just play with my range, play a bit more further back and deal the damage I can while we focus our resources on Cassio winning the team fights. Yeah. And in the end, it was you that dealt the final hits to uh, the Nexus. Tell me about those last moments, because we, we were actually calling, oh no, they can't, they just can't, and then you did manage to kill it. It was super nerve-wracking, because we were 2v2 two two for a few seconds, and we managed to kill down Lissandra, and I think Steelback 40 killed me with red buffs, so he kind of left me to my own demise, so I was just live-stealing a bit and hitting the Nexus, and I managed to take it down. Yeah, so, phew! That's in the books. And you guys are actually 2-0 and o this week. Do you feel like the pressure of having to get that playoff spot and staying out of relegation zone, is that something that is making you thrive, uh, thrive sorry, and do better, Ms. Jachi? Mm, maybe it is in it as well, because we are, we were, like, before this week, we were so close to not being able to play in the playoffs. So we really had to uh, get our strategies together and play our best. Mm -hmm. So this week, I think we played really consistent. Uh, we we want to continue it next week as well. Yeah, and Vardak, the same for you. Actually, if Elements don't manage to win their game later, that means you guys have locked in your playoff spot already. But of course, you got your faith in your own hands as well. How do you think it's going to all play out? Well, hopefully Elements loses so we're <laughs> safe. But <laughs> of course, we just want to focus on our own game and try and go to all next week as well. Yeah, and use uh, all the energy you got from this game, uh, of course, uh, while going into next game and possibly into playoffs. And if you give us more of those exciting games, it's going to be amazing as well. Now, we have to take a short break and go on cooldown to catch our breath. But when we return, the Copenhagen Wolves have their chance to score a win off the top of the tables as they face the number one SK Gaming. Of course, we'll be right here with all of the coverage in just three and a half. What? Ooh, I just hear kicks, 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 You just need to have strong imagination. <laughs> <laughs> and then you hear power, power. Next oh, pick up. And who does catches game? two? The shark catches them both. Power of Evil's down. Fnatic, look for Hilly Sun. He's down. Nice. Kill, kill them, kill them, kill them. Kill them. Nice, nice, kill them, guys. Kill them. Good job. Kill them. Good job, guys. Nice! Meet, 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 meet. Nothing less on the building! That's a flash W! He's called Power of Evil! Collateral damage is gonna be shielded away by the Archangel Shield. Steelback is down! They're onto their Nexus! Fnatic looks like they're standing at 33 minutes! Fnatic are taking down the Unicorns of Love! No! A few more hits! No, 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 no. What? Can Power of Evil turn around? Can he get it? From Steelback! He can't Vanics find Fnatic! Steelback is looking for Power of Evil! Unicorns have done it! Unicorns! 